Did you know that the hypermelanistic syndrome are happen in most of the koi carp? The hypermelanistic mutation causes an increase in black pigmentation resulting from a high quantity of melanophores. This mutation is not well studied so the genetic inheritance in carp is unknown. It very well seen from Shoa Sanchoku and is prevalent Shiro Utsuri. Although similar in appearance to Kōhaku, Shoa Sanchoku are distinctive due to the faint reds and oranges observed in their body coloration. The baby Shoa Sanchoku are born black, and after the first mutation they rarely had bright red colors pattern, mostly orange, or yellowish. In Shoa Sanchoku, the red pattern will gradually getting more deep red by their ages. It happened because of the hypermelanistic mutation. Melanophores, or the black pigmentation, are located above the color containing pigment cells, such as xanthrophores, or the yellow pigments, erythrophores or the red pigments, and leucophores, or white pigments. When melanophores are in high quantity, little light is able to penetrate beneath the black pigmentation, and is instead short wavelength light is reflected. Thus the koi carp have little coloration. This hypermelanistic syndrome on koi carp is not dangerous. Actually this mutation is a natural mutation in the organism's survival mechanism. For example, a koi will darken even more in a pond with dark walls, because that is part of its camouflage for self-defense from predators, a mechanism that is already present in the DNA of the river carp Magoi ancestor. This DNA code appears frequently, even though such a mechanism is no longer needed for koi in man-made aquaculture ponds, which are far from being threatened by predators. But the emergence of hypermelanistic syndrome, the appearance of this wild black pigment, is something beautiful in the colors of koi fish. The name of this type of koi fish is Hagashiro. Hagashiro, which means white head, is a type of koi fish from the Karasugoi group, or the black koi group. The distinctive feature of Hagashiro is that its body is black, its fins are white, and its dorsal fin is also white. Hagashiro is often mistaken for Matsukawabuki, who also has white patches on his body, and has the same tendency to continuously mutate. The difference is, black on Hagashiro is more solid and stable than Matsukawabuki. The black color in Matsukawabuki tends to fluctuate, but in Hagashiro it is more stable. Like other types of koi fish in the Karasugoi group, the Hagashiro is also a rare fish. Not all koi farms have these koi fish. Hagashiro, really worth collecting in your koi pond, but only if you can get this rare koi fish. Myself wondering what did happen to the last ten. I ran away with my life fast forward, never turned back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true. I'm just as surprised as you. Today we will look at the another koi in this Karasuboi group, the Matsukawabuki koi.
Matsuka Wabaki, is a koi that looked like the Shiro Atsuri, with no metallic skin and fully scaled, but, it also had the desired changing sumi pattern, of the Kumonru. Meaning, that over a Matsuka Wabaki koi's lifetime, it can be fully white, fully black, and anything in between. This pattern is particularly desirable to many koi keepers, because the fish is constantly changing. Sometimes the change can be very rapid, other times the change is very slow. Regardless, it is always interesting, the look in a pond with one of these fish, and see what is happening to the pattern. You never getting bored to keep the Matsukawabaki, because it's like, you always have a new look. If we talk about Matsukawabaki, we should talk about Henka Sumi. This changing Sumi, or black pattern, is referred to by the Japanese breeders as Henka Sumi, and literally translates as changing black. The Henka Sumi specifically refers to a temporary pattern, where each scale is changing, from a light phase, when it is white or light gray, to a dark phase, when it is black, and back again. While each scale has a light and dark phase, we also refer to the whole Matsukawabaki as having a light or dark phase. When a Matsukawabaki is in its dark phase, the fish is mostly black with the majority of its individual scales in the dark phase. Meanwhile, when a Matsukawabaki is in its light phase, most of the scales are in their light phases. It is unknown exactly what causes one of these Matsukawabaki to change between phases, often, they appear to change for no reason whatsoever. Matsukawabaki is hard to judge because he has no basic pattern and always change by time. But this fish, is show us, how the ancient coloration genes in koi carp is really active genes. Genes that yet bring to us a wonderful colors of koi carp. The Kumonryu is a Doitsu scalus koi that has a jet black pattern that emerges like billowing black clouds against a white background. The black pattern is variable and unstable, disappearing with changes in the water temperature and reappearing sometimes as a completely different pattern. Because the sumi is unstable, the Kumonryu's pattern can change at the drop of a hat, from all white to completely black, with every imaginable variation in between. Although it is still uncertain what exactly causes the changes, contributing factors can be water temperature, water change, water quality, pH change, diet, sexual maturity, stress and so on and so forth. The ever-changing nature of the pattern 
is probably what makes this koi such a joy to own. When the sumi pattern is under the white waiting to emerge, it can give the skin a bluish hue. I have seen kumanryu with patterns that changed so slowly that they seemed almost stable, and others that underwent radical changes within the course of a few weeks. Actually, the color black sumi has two dimensions or aspects. First, the actual genetic expression. That is to say the number of color cells, the intensity of the melanin in those cells, their size, and soon. There really are only two or maybe three origins of this genetic expression. A. The Asagi and Iron Magoi strains. And the then the work done with selective breeding. B. The further mutation of these two origins, hypermelaninism, like the Kumanryu. Second, the location in which the genes are expressed. Since color is more what the human eye sees than some ultimate constant, the location is key as to the color we see. This can be broken down into two key considerations. A. Location within the epidermis, dermis and deep dermis, each giving a different effect. Black becomes blue, blue becomes gray. B. The type of dermis the color cells are embedded in. There are many types and colors to the dermis itself. It can be white, solid white and white, or double recessive, or transparent white. These settings make for a different look to black sumi, some can enhance and some can makes black sumi look smoky gray. While in the same case as Kumanryu, the black sumi genes expression mostly on the lateral line of her body side, but the expression is an unstable. The hypermelanistic mutation, causes an increase in black pigmentation resulting from a high quantity of melanophores. Melanophores, or the black pigmentation, are located above the color-containing pigment cells, such as xanthophores, or the yellow pigments, erythrophores are the red pigments, and leucophores, or white pigments. When melanophores are in high quantity, little light is able to penetrate beneath the black pigmentation, and is instead short-wavelength light is reflected. Thus the koi carp have little coloration. This hypermelanistic syndrome on koi carp is not dangerous. Actually this mutation is a natural mutation in the organism's survival mechanism. For example, a koi will darken even more in a pond with dark walls, because that is part of its camouflage for self-defense from predators, a mechanism that is already present in the DNA of the river carp Magoi ancestor. This DNA code appears frequently, even though such a mechanism is no longer needed for koi in man-made aquaculture ponds, which are far from being threatened by predators. But the emergence of hypermelanistic syndrome, the appearance of this wild black pigment, is something beautiful in the colors of Kumanryu. Did you ever heard a show won by Kumanryu, in Japan, or ZNA chapter elsewhere in the world? I say that because Kumanryu, one of my favorite non-Gosenki also, is not usually in the hunt to beat every Gosenki in the show, at any rate. It is first the same in that we judge all koi against a standard for the breed, after, we have judged it for soundness, confirmation, quality, color and pattern. And depending on size and age, these categories shift in order, or become emphasized based on age or size. A word about judging, many judges will judge on the old point system. This is reliable and necessary to a degree, but it is always at the expense of the all-important subjective element of judging. And that can be quite disappointing in terms of honoring unique, or special fish that happen not to score high on the point system. Others judge strictly from the heart, and judge a fish as a whole creature based on the impression the fish makes on them. 
That is okay to a degree, and it is true that many folks with a natural I gravitate to judging and are quickly accepted into the program. These are also unfortunately, the people most resistant to future learning, and miss details of soundness, confirmation, or anything. A judge has to be above all things flexible in attitude. The team of judges will usually compensate for the extreme point of view and bring things back to center anyway. The flexibility however, is invaluable as it is what provides for future learning and therefore more enlightened judging. Okay it ran over, but I wanted to get that out there so that we can move to Kumanryu judging. Kumanryu are of course, Kawaramono class, unless they are not. You remember when I said that, Kujaku, is a must, have first and foremost have terrier shine. Well the reason that is so important is that Kujaku enters the show as one representative of Hikari Moyo. So by definition, these are shiny fish. If they are not, then they must really be put in Kawaramono as a normal skin koi. This often happens with Matsuba by the way, a close relative of Kujaku. If it is shiny it goes in Hikari and if not, it goes in Kawarimono. Kumanryu is from a known breeding that requires it be in with its relatives, Karasu Goi. But Kumanryu can also be Ginrin, and Kumanryu can be, real, Kumanryu, some variation on Doitsu Karasu types, two-colored red Kumanryu and now three-colored Kumanryu. All this means that a great deal of subjectively enters into the decision making. But it should not be, judging from the heart, although it can sometimes appear that way. The classic Kumanryu in this video, it is killer and perfect as a true Kumanryu, yet it is not the most famous Kumanryu. The Orca Kumanryu is the most famous Kumanryu. The point being, if we are using the point system and are orthodox in our standard for Kumanryu, the first fish wins. But if we judge with a loud subjective element, the second fish wins. I believe pattern makes for a good Kumanryu just like Terry makes for a good Kujaku. But in the case below I would have to honor the second with the win, with just talking pattern here and not confirmation as these are vastly different size fish. It is hard to find good Kumanrius, and generally people are more lenient in regards to minor conformational flaws because flaws are so common in this type. They tend to be shorter fish with weaker body lines. This does not mean that the perfect ones are not out there, but they are less common than Gosenki varieties which tend to have the most harsh standards. Sumi was originally a protective coloring, and it is likely to become lighter when it is in a bright pond. The black can drastically change depending on the environment due to water temperature, changes in the water, and even stress. There are not strict rules on how and where the sumi should create a pattern on this koi. The value depends on how artistic the markings are. This kumanryu koi would be categorized to the class of kawari mano at koi shows and has black patterns that run the lengthwise down the body. If you study koi, you can tell the difference between the kumanryu from the doitsu shiro yutsuri because the sumi of the kumanryu appears as one solid sumi on the whole body, while doitsu shiro yutsuri have independent sumi patches. This variety tends to have imperfect tails or fins, so look for good body formation and deep sumi colors. One of the most interesting varieties from a developmental standpoint is the black and white, Scale-less Kumanryu Kumanryu comes from a long line of koi beginning with a dark-colored magoi variant called Atetsu magoi. From crosses with this koi many years ago an all-black koi was developed called a Karasugoi. Some of these koi had white fin tips, which were singled out and further cross-bred to create koi with more and more white. 
eventually a black koi with a white head and white fins, was developed called a Yatsushiro. The first Kumanryu, which is merely a Doitsu scaleless version of a Yatsushiro, was created when a Shisui, or a Doitsu koi with red lateral markings and a bluish body color, was crossed with a Yatsushiro. One way to tell a Kumanryu from a Doitsu Shiro Utsuri is to look closely at the white skin. A Kumanryu will have a bluish tint, inherited from its Shisui parent. The other difference between the two is the genetic tendency of the Sumi black to appear as a wrapping pattern on Utsuri, while it appears more as a lateral type pattern, or the pattern running lengthwise on Kumanryu. From the first Kumanryu many breeders have developed variations in the patterning, including some truly spectacular specimens reminiscent of a killer whale type of pattern. The problem is, these koi have a nasty habit of changing colors from season to season, black becomes white and white becomes black, and also changing their patterns from year to year, so that you may not even recognize your own koi if you don't watch it closely. For this reason, it is difficult to select a baby kumanryu. They tend to develop more black as they mature, so some hobbyists recommend purchasing predominantly white babies. If you really want to increase your chances of getting a good specimen, and your budget and pond can handle it, perhaps purchasing two or three of them would make sense. These koi are a lot of fun to own and provide endless fascination as they change their patterns from season to season and from year to year. Did you enjoy the video? You can check out other videos from Fishy Wild, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I will be happy to see you again, and let's get in touch in the comments section.